At the MRS Spring Meeting 2022, the material science community gathers in Honolulu and online to discuss new developments and research in material science. The meeting program explores a wide range of topics from morphing materials to perovskites, photocatalysts, biomaterials, and much more. And MRS TV is right here bringing you all the latest from the meeting. Welcome to the Hawaii Convention Center in Honolulu and episode one of MRS TV 2022. As attendees are beginning to join the first day of the spring meeting, we're here to find out some of the hot topics this year. We learn more about the possible uses of hydrogen to help decarbonize transportation, industry, and power generation. This year's MRS Communications lecturer gives a preview of his talk. We hear more about new and exciting developments in material science from research organizations around the globe. The organizers of this year's PowerPoint Karaoke explain how to best win the crowd's approval in this fun and engaging competition. And finally, we ask you, the attendees, what you're most looking forward to at the meeting. As you can see, we have an exciting program coming up. So stay tuned for our first interview. You're watching MRS TV. I'm joined virtually by Elizabeth Cox, Ashley White, and Anthony Koo, who are hosting a session on hydrogen. Now, there are high hopes for hydrogen to help decarbonize transportation, industry, and power generation, and material science has an important part to play. So let's start with you, Elizabeth and Ashley. You're part of the group that organized the materials needs for energy sustainability by 2050. Is hydrogen the fuel of the future? That's a panel session, which will be held on Tuesday evening. What will attendees of this session experience? Um, it's, it's really fun. What we try to do is create an engaging environment for our attendees. We do that through some live polling. We've got time for Q&A as well. And it's just an opportunity maybe to get a little bit outside of our really um, super narrow technical focus as material scientists and um, kind of be part of a, a wider discussion that looks at how you bring in other um, kind of interdisciplinary scientific aspects, but also things outside like um, policy, um, industry, that sort of thing that, that are all part of our ecosystem of really tackling um, sustainability challenges. It really opens up that conversation so that we're not just siloed in our disciplines, but we're thinking holistically about how to really address our, our biggest challenges moving forward. And not just from one, your particular silo, your discipline, whether it's a policy one, whether it's a materials one, whether it's a supply chain one, um, but it does cut across all of it and it opens our minds and broadens the discussion. And Anthony, you're actually going to be the moderator for the session. In looking at the panelists, we see a mix of representatives from industry, academia, and government agencies. Tell us about the importance of these three groups working together in this effort. 28 years will go by very, very quickly if you think about the magnitude of the changes that we're looking to do across energy, industry, the economy. And so to, to be able to do something like that, you really do need ideas. You need to have um, capabilities to, to actually put those into practice in the real world. You need rules for the playing field for the markets. And so industry, academia, government, they all come together and they have to be talking to each other to be able to make sure you get things done as quickly and as um, a large scale um, as you're trying to do. And so the speakers that we have actually will represent and will be an industry, academia, and policy, but they've actually been in different lanes. So it'll be a really neat conversation, we think, to be able to bring out what will it take to be able to do everything we're trying to do in, in under 30 years? And past events in the Sustainability by 2050 series focused on the role of plastics, incentivizing a zero waste future and storage for decarbonization. Why the focus on hydrogen as a fuel for this meeting? Right, hydrogen's part of the overall picture, but how does it fit in? Um, we're not quite sure. And so having that conversation and moving that along, um, I think has value, especially with the technical communities and trying to connect not just MRS with each other, but, but also with the broader landscape of what's going on and what people are talking about. And you selected 2050 as the target date for this series on sustainability. Why that date in particular and how are we doing in achieving that target? The 2050 date kind of recognizes that 
Uh, there are urgent energy climate needs right now that we need to start tackling. The lifespan of many things, whether it's power plants or um, transportation, you know, those have specific time lines, right? So, so a power plant might be in operation for 40 years before it, it needs to be either shut down or it needs to be renovated or something needs to happen. And so understanding that when we're, we're looking at the long-term vision, the long-term goal of reaching um, energy sustainability by 2050, then that's holistic. And if someone wanted to get involved with the MRS focus on sustainability topics, how do they do that? So if you find me or Elizabeth or Anthony at our event, we can certainly um, point you in the right direction. Uh, you could also go to MRS's website. There is a focus on sustainability page on the MRS site, or you can also um, you know, send, send me an email. So I'm the chair of the subcommittee. Feel free to reach out. All right, thank you so much. Such an interesting topic. See you soon. As a reminder, that session will be on Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. in room 310 here at the Hawaii Convention Center. Now let's take a look at some of the latest developments in the world of material science. The Center for Integrated Nanotechnologies, an Office of Science National User Facility, offers opportunities for students and researchers at its two New Mexico facilities, Sandia and Los Alamos National Laboratories. Let's find out more. There is no better place to build a scientific career than a national user facility. It's a really exciting environment to do research. SINT stands for the Center for Integrated Nanotechnology. And we have two facilities, one at Sandia National Laboratories and our gateway facility up at Los Alamos uh, National Laboratory. This is a really exciting time for nanomaterials research. And that's because there's a demand for new materials at the national level. To get access to SINT, all you need to do is write a two or three page innovative science proposal or nanoscience proposal. Uh, that it's reviewed externally, and then once that proposal is accepted, then you're able to access all the capabilities at SINT for free. What I really enjoy about being in the SINT environment is having experts in anything you can think of right around the corner from your office. The Center for Rational Catalyst Synthesis is an NSF industry university cooperative research center at three universities. They receive funding from 17 companies to do pre-competitive fundamental research to elucidate the chemical fundamentals of heterogeneous catalyst synthesis. Catalyst preparation has been called a voodoo science. You have to use the right incantations and spells to get the, uh, the right formulation. And so our goal in the Center for Rational Catalyst Synthesis is to turn the art of catalyst preparation into a science. The opportunity to collaborate is um, a really important aspect of not only what we're doing in research, but the mission of circus. The, the whole concept is we do academic fundamental research that's driven by technological need and opportunity. The Center for Rational Catalyst Synthesis is a wonderful place for people to develop new ideas and to cultivate new ideas. At Tsinghua University in Beijing, research into flexible electronics has been at the cutting edge, focused on the design and fabrication of flexible integrated circuits. Let's take a closer look. Our group has been working on flexible electronic technology for more than 15 years. More than 180 patents have been authorized in the past Olympic Winter Games in 2022, we developed a wearable chest strap to help the athletes monitoring the body temperature, ECG, and location in real time. 
flexible circuit manufacturing technologies, reduced flexible rotation monitoring system, conformally attaching these systems into rotation parts. All the work we did require experts from different fields. We cooperate with them in a multidisciplinary approach. Batch production of live demos from Tsinghua University can be realized in IFET with eight small-scale pilot production lines. Tsinghua University and IFET will be the pioneer in bringing flexible electronics to common users, who will benefit a lot from this technology. The Center for Sustainable Materials and Innovation is a new scientific and technological innovation hub. The hub aims to solve some of the most pressing sustainable development goals around materials design and the circular economy. The Center for Sustainable Material and Innovation started from the very core concept of how we think about material. And our goal is to have a radical shift in the way we design, we engineer and eventually manufacture material to add the sustainability consideration into play. Today, when we make material, we think about the efficiency, the durability of the material, but there is no information about the sustainability figure of merit. So, for example, how much energy it takes to uh, reuse the material or recycle the material and what is going to be the environmental impact. So with the, this center we want to really rethink the way we make materials and have sustainability as one of the key parameters in the way we design them. I'm joined now by Michael Wilhelm and Anya Zortorius, and they are going to talk to us about a special event that they have planned here at the conference. Welcome, good to see you guys. Thanks for having us here. <laughs> and so I wanted to talk to you about PowerPoint Karaoke, an interesting concept, uh, but you've been doing it for several years. Tell us about it. Okay, so PowerPoint Karaoke, as the name says, is a mixture between karaoke and PowerPoint. Um, a volunteering presenter has a quick time to check out a random PowerPoint slide that he or she has never seen before in their life and create a story out of it. So as it is a fun event, it's more important to make out a fun or exciting story than being 100% scientific right. Uh, the task is to get out of your comfort zone and convince us and the audience that you know exactly what you're talking about and that you're the original author of this slide. Wow, okay, and it's a competition, so people vote and I understand it's not serious all the time, right? It's not just about the science that you can actually turn this into a bit of comedy. That's right, so I mean, we're, we're having uh, such fantastic presenters sometimes and I mean, as the organizer, we see the slides previously and I mean, we get a clue, okay, how can you uh, present the slide, uh, what can be a little bit funny. But I mean, to give an example from our previous session, uh, we had one presenter um, and she broke out a guitar and then presented the slide with a, within a song. So this was so amazing to see and another great, great uh, experience was when we had one slide over so, so it was left out and we said, okay, who can present it? And then Matt Copel came and said, okay, uh, I will do it. And he did it brilliantly. And this was such a great honor for such a student-led uh, event. That's right, you guys are students, uh, part of the student engagement subcommittee. What events and what kinds of things do you guys do? It's completely different. So we are a team of undergraduated, graduate and PhD students um, with our session chair, Dr. Eva Hemmer and one of the MRS um, boards, so Lori Smiley. And we have a lot of different events. So for example, we can have different talks, events like PowerPoint, karaoke, or also what will happen uh, Monday morning, the Bridging the Gap event, where we have a talk of um, mem um, people who are not only uh, from the scientific board, but also from the industry. And if you would like to join and be part of our team, just contact us. Come to any of our events, have a chat with us, or 
if you're not here or have any time, you can write us an email and be part of our team. Oh, it sounds so amazing, especially with all the hard work that you guys do. It can be, get really serious and heavy. So I'm glad that you guys have this outlet to be creative and fun. Um, tell us about where the event is, how can people get involved? And I hear you're also gonna feed people, <laughs> which is important to get people out. Definitely. So there will be a couple of snacks and drinks uh, around. So um, basically it's taking place on Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. in the Hawaii Convention Center in room 301B. Um, basically it's open for everyone, um, but I mean, it's basically a student uh, event. So students are definitely welcome. Um, so, yeah, let's see. And at the end, the audience have to build the jury and vote for their best presenter and slides. So uh, hopefully we see you there. So looking forward to it. Wonderful. Good way to kick off the, uh, the conference is to talk about something fun and engaging for everyone. It's not just for students, right? Anyone can join. For well, everybody. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. It's good to see you. Enjoy the conference. Thanks. You too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We're MRS TV, your daily news show featuring interviews and discussions on hot topics in material science from this year's MRS meeting. You can catch us around the convention center in Honolulu, in select hotel rooms, on the MRS website, the virtual MRS meeting platform, and on YouTube. And you can join the conversation on social media. With new content each day of the meeting, make sure to keep watching. Joining me now is Andreas Lendlein, and he was just awarded the MRS Communications Lecture Award. Congratulations. Thank you. And I understand it's for a topic that is very, very interesting. Um, you're actually going to be talking about uh, shape morphing materials in your talk. And you are actually basing that from the Venus flytrap that all of us know about, but may not have seen it in the way that you study it. Why the Venus flytrap? Before I answer your questions in detail. First of all, let me thank the MRS Communications Journal for selecting our publication. And it's a pleasure to be here in Hawaii and to have the first in-person meeting after so many virtual meetings in the, in the meantime. The virtual flytrap has been described by Charles Darwin already about 150 years ago. And the characteristic about this plant is this jaw-like trap, which is formed by two lobes, which are together connected to the midrib of the organ. And what is the interesting feature of that fly trap is that it snaps so quickly. It's a few tenths of a second that are needed for that process. And this mechanism is very much based on the shape of the lobes. The lobes are shell, have a shell-like shape, which is a constrained geometry. In the very beginning, the curvature is looking outwards. And then they do something that goes quickly, which is an inversion of the curvature. They snap through, and that is what makes it so fast. The challenge is to overcome the energy barrier that hinders typically this movement. And that occurs after a mechanical simulation on the inside of the lobes by small sensory hairs, a water displacement leads to a stretching on the outside of the lobes. That generates a stress energy internally. And if that overcomes the hurdle, it goes quickly. And this mechanism, which is nicely described in the review paper by Joel Pater, which we um, took as a starting point, this is what we try to mimic with our synthetic materials. You see, triggering by an external stimulus, the active mechanism, and then the snap-through mechanism. And we made use of all types of digital methods, from digital design to predictive modeling, and also the fabrication uses digital tools. Amazing how science is taking a page from nature, the amazing uh, structure of nature. Um, now, your talk is on Monday at 10.30 in Kalakaua Ballroom B. So what? Can you tell us about what you'll be presenting? I will address the topic of shape morphing materials from a bit wider perspective. Well, I will begin with shape memory polymers. Those are the heat shrinkable 
foils that we see often at the airport when some shrink wrap is burned around a suitcase. I will explain how other stimuli and heat have been applied, like light, magnetic field, or even humidity can trigger this shape memory effect. And they have application potential, especially in minimally invasive surgery, where we want to place large spacious implants through a small incision in the body, and then they unfold to the application relevant shape. Then this field moved to reversible movement, temperature controlled, and this temperature controlled movements allows to make artificial muscles. And finally, the highlight will be the fly trap. You did mention that you have some co-authors on that paper. Why was it important to collaborate with them? That was a truly interdisciplinary project. As Johann Beckermo, who did all the work with the computational design and with the predictive modeling, what we saw in the computer in principle it would work. But then somebody then had to translate the, the, the results from the virtual world to the real world. And that was Yui Liu's work. She made those devices and she demonstrated that they really work. A fantastic team. Wonderful. That's so interesting. Again, inspired from nature and applied in so many interesting I love that topic. aspects. I know. Wonderful. And again, shape morphing materials. Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming and sharing that with us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you for the interest. And finally, we asked you, the delegates, what you think the hottest topics are. I'm so excited for my poster session, talk to some great people and see some awesome talks. I'm excited because this is my first larger society meeting for material science ever. So it'll be really cool to meet everyone in the field and also learn about topics uh, more away from, separated from my field as well. Well, I'm excited about the optical materials. That's also the session that I'm presenting at, the optical and magnetic materials and also the theranostics. So my research actually combines both fields. So I'm really excited about attending those parts. Learning stuff that I wasn't aware existed. Uh, I think I was looking at some of the topics, metamaterials, uh, plasmonics, stuff I didn't really know much about. I'm excited to meet people again after uh, two longish years. So it'd be nice to talk to people in person about science and kind of moving that forward. I'm working in biosciences. I'm really looking forward like, to the application of new materials. So I'm working with organic um, semiconductors and like there's a lot of new compositioning going on and like we're really into understanding these materials. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking to see what people have and what they are putting into. I'm really excited to meet people doing operando techniques for materials characterization. I think that'll be really cool to see. I'm very interested in the sodium ion portion of the uh, MRS meeting. Um, I'm excited to hear the new research, new cutting edge research, research that uh, other universities are doing. So my work is on battery research and I'm so excited to look at um, what happens on the interface of electrodes. And so there's lots of sessions on that that I'm excited for. And that's it for our first day here at the MRS Spring Meeting 2022. And things are really beginning to kick off here in Honolulu. Tomorrow, we will have more interviews with thought leaders and award winners. So make sure to tune in again. Before then, you can watch the show here at the Conference Center, in your hotel room, and online. And don't forget to subscribe and follow MRS TV on social media. We'll see you tomorrow.